Hello and welcome. My name's Heather. I'm a registered professional counselor and a certified life coach. Today, I'm going to be analyzing Taylor Swift's short film, All... Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Taylor Swift's short film, All Too Well, and take a look at the relationship dynamics and also the breakup. So it looks like they're in the beginning of their relationship. It could be a bit of the honeymoon phase. So this is quite normal when people first become a couple um, because they're experiencing a lot of new and positive experiences together. There's a lot more effort when it comes to spending more time together, um, having more creative dates, and also getting to know each other as well. So I know that there's a lot of speculation about Taylor Swift writing the song about her and Jake Chillenhall's relationship. I'm not going to be talking about that, obviously, because I didn't have any sessions with them. These are just speculations. I'm going to be talking specifically about the short film and what is portrayed there. According to John Gottman, there are four negative communication patterns that couples have, and he coined them as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And with his research, what he's found is that he can predict with 90% accuracy whether or not a couple is going to make it or if they're going to break up. These four patterns include criticism, contempt, stonewalling, and defensiveness. Let's see what shows up in this argument. Why are you so pissed off? I'm not pissed off. You said I was pissed off. Because you're acting pissed off. It's ridiculous. Okay, so probably not the best way to start a discussion with your partner. That definitely could have come off differently. Uh, he could have just said something like, I noticed that you seem upset. Do you want to talk about it? The other thing is that we don't know if she was giving him the silent treatment um, and that led him to asking why she's pissed off. If she was upset, because it seems like she clearly is, um, or if there's something on her mind, she could have just said something like, hey, I'm feeling a little upset, not really ready to talk about it. I want some time to process these feelings, but I do want to let you know that that's what I'm going through, if that's what you're sensing. I like the way that you acted around them. You were being weird and quiet the entire time. Not... By him saying that you were being weird and quiet, that's actually a sign of criticism. So he's attacking his partner's core characteristics. It's easy for the argument to escalate from here because you're essentially attacking the other person. So that's not a great start. You dropped my fucking hand! What am I supposed to do with that? I didn't even fucking notice. So they're escalating quite quickly. They're using hostile language. They're swearing at each other. I think the main point is that she felt ignored during the evening. As she talks about when she tried to hold his hand and then he just you know, drops it on the table and like pats it. She was trying to essentially reach out to him in order to feel closer to him. Uh, she mentioned that she didn't know any of these people. They were a lot older than her. I'm guessing he's also older than her. It's understandable why she would feel out of place. Now, how do you communicate that? So she could have said something like, I'm feeling ignored and upset. And when I try to reach your hand, you you didn't want to hold it back and it just made me feel like I wasn't a priority. It's definitely brought up feelings of insecurity. I know that you didn't mean to do this on purpose, but I just need some reassurance because right now I'm feeling a little insecure and I'm not really sure where we stand in the relationship. And then he could have said something like, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize I did that. It wasn't my intention to hurt you. I was just having a really good time with my friends. I haven't seen them in 10 years and I just, I guess I got caught up in the moment. I really didn't mean to make you feel excluded and I'm really sorry if that's how you felt. Um, I'll be more mindful in the future when we do hang out with our friends to include you. I don't know I any of these people. They're all strangers. They're all older than me. But like, what are you talking I feel so out of place. You're the only one You're that makes this about you. And this could have also been a conversation that they could have had before the dinner party. So. Maybe she could have said something like, hey, I'm really happy to be meeting your friends. I know you're super excited to meet them because you haven't seen them in a long time. I just don't want to feel left out. Is it okay if you just do your best to try to include me uh, so I feel more comfortable? And then that way he would have had the opportunity to be a little bit more mindful during the dinner party in front of their friends. I was catching up Don't do that. You're making me feel fucking stupid. Holy shit. 
don't think I'm making you feel that way. I think you're making yourself feel that way. They are clearly not trying to understand each other. They're trying to win the argument. And we see this all the time. You might have experienced it as well with your partners where when we're in a fight with them, we just want to prove that we're right. It's clear that both of them are feeling attacked. He feels attacked from her and he's trying to hurt her back by saying um, that this is stupid and she's starting to get defensive now by saying you're making me feel stupid and it's, it's just getting out of hand. He's saying that you're making yourself feel stupid. So this could be a manipulation tactic where he puts the blame on her and he's not taking any responsibility for his actions. It's important to just focus on the behavior or the specific action and not by saying you're being crazy or you're being stupid or anything like that. I actually had a fucking blast. Now, now this is the night. Now we're doing this. Awesome. So fucking awesome. So sarcasm in the fights is not a good sign. We already see that he's exhibiting that. He's saying, oh, awesome. Tonight's about this now. Awesome. If you do find yourself in an argument, try to avoid sarcasm. It really minimizes how the other person's feeling. It minimizes uh, the situation itself. And he's also guilt tripping her now. So he's basically saying that he had a really great time. And now because of this conversation, uh, she's to blame for ruining the evening. Again, this could also be another manipulation tactic where you are guilt tripping the other person uh, to try to end the argument or to not take any responsibility for your part. The other thing is that with him guilt tripping her and saying that the night is ruined because of this fight and because of her, it could be a sign of contempt. Contempt is worse than criticism in terms of the four horsemen. Criticism is when you are attacking the other person's poor character, whereas contempt puts you in a position of moral superiority over them. And it doesn't help that he's a bit older than her, so that can also play into the dynamics as well. You didn't even look at me once! What are you this talking me. about? Oh, no, no, I'm no, catching no, up no, with no, my no, friends! Oh, trust me, they were enthralled by you, of course! Maybe he wasn't paying attention to her or including her in the conversation, and she felt excluded. And now she's also using sarcasm back by saying, oh yeah, your friends were enthralled by you. So this is a really clear sign of contempt. He's rolling his eyes, he's shaking his head, he doesn't feel that he's wrong in the situation, and he is basically just fed up with her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a good sign that he's trying to show some physical affection, um, and that can also be really helpful to kind of bond the couple after an argument. I'm sorry, I dropped your hand. He did say he was sorry for dropping her hand, but it sounds like there was a tone in that. It sounded like it was also um, a bit sarcastic, where it's like, I'm sorry I dropped your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, just not the most effective way of apologizing. So we do see that she's upset. She's crying. She's probably really upset because she feels that she's not being understood. And she's probably still hurt from her initial feelings from the dinner party. What typically happens is that we express our hurt and our sadness um, using anger, but it's much more effective to express our more vulnerable feelings. So our primary emotions, such as feeling hurt or scared. Unfortunately, we're not taught how to communicate this way, which is why I like to make videos like this. So she's laughing, she's crying, she's saying that she feels embarrassed. So the argument has ended, but nothing got resolved. Sorry. <laughs> We see that she's still bothered by the situation, uh, which is understandable because he didn't really address how she was feeling um, and nothing got resolved. This is concerning because these feelings of maybe feeling ignored or feeling like she's not good enough or something like that can carry forward in their relationship. He clearly broke up with her. I try to read her lips, but it's hard to. She's clearly very upset by it. It seemed like she was a bit blindsided. It seemed like up leading up to this point, they were still having a lot of positive experiences together. I mean, breakups are probably one of the most painful 
experiences that we can go through in our lives. And it's even more difficult when we weren't expecting it. If you're so in love, if you're head over heels with that person, and it seemed like leading up to this point, it seemed everything was fine. All of a sudden, they drop this bomb on you saying that they want to break up for whatever reason. It can actually be um, a little traumatizing just because you put in all this time and effort uh, to make the relationship work. With breakups, it's a really complex form of grieving and loss because it's not only that you're losing this person who was your partner, who you would see every day, but you're also losing the expectations that you had for your future together. And heartbreaks are tough because people don't really treat it the same as any other form of injury. So let's say, for example, you broke your leg, um, you have to wear a cast, you have to rest, maybe you have to go to physio. With matters of the heart, it's sort of the same thing. Like, we need time to grieve. This is why I specialize in breakups, because I know that there's not a lot of specialized support when it comes to getting over our heartbreaks or, you know, rebuilding our lives or being able to have a safe place to uh, grieve the relationship. He's trying to call her, he's trying to message her. It makes the situation even more painful because now you're creating unnecessary suffering for the other person. Even if you're trying to call them up and see how they're doing, even though you might have good intentions, you don't know where the other person is at. It could be potentially harming them as we see right now. And that's why it's important to have the no contact. The other thing about being in a serious relationship when you're that young is that there's definitely a higher possibility of enmeshments. What I mean by enmeshment is that one's identity becomes completely absorbed into the other person or into the relationship. And this tends to happen a lot when we are younger. And when we break up, it's even more painful because now we've lost our sense of identity and it becomes harder to be able to get over the person because we don't really have a relationship with ourselves anymore because we've completely devoted our time and our identity to being so-and-so's boyfriend or girlfriend. And that's why during the breakup recovery, it could be even more difficult. Be Hello. It could be even more difficult if we were enmeshed in that previous relationship because now we're trying to figure out our own self-identity while trying to get over that heartbreak. And sometimes it can help for us to be able to process our feelings and our grief and our emotions if we were to channel it into something more creative. So we see here that she's writing a book and 13 years later, she's published it and she's highly successful. And that's what we can do. We have control over that. We can turn our breakups into our greatest breakthroughs. And we see that the guy, uh, the older version of the guy still has her red scarf. Um, apparently that's a really big thing now on the internet is we're trying to figure out where Taylor Swift's scarf is. Yeah, I think that she did a really great job portraying, uh, you know, a real life breakup. She's always been such a really great storyteller through her music. Yeah, I really enjoyed this short film. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to check out my other Therapist Reviews videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, be kind and love yourself.